Now you do. All right. Well, let's get a cracking. Finn, we have a couple of pre-submitted questions for you, and then we're going to open it up for some live Q&A to fill in the rest of the time. The two questions that have been submitted for you are very similar in nature, and unfortunately, they're not about you. Uh, the first question is from Nick Geraci from Inman Global. Finn, do you have any thoughts you'd like to share about Licorice's transfer from FlyQuest to Golden Guardians? Mm, don't have any specific thoughts regarding Licorice or Golden Guardians or FlyQuest in that matter. But, uh, I, I wish he, I wish him the best, and I hope he, he finds his his uh, his form back. Yeah. And then the follow-up question, also from Inman Global's John Popko, is how do you think this trade is going to affect both teams? Uh, well, it's really hard for me to say as an outside perspective from an, from outside, but I think both of these guys hope to get some kind of honeymoon effect going, where they switch things up and they kind of feel some some freshness. Uh, just bringing new players, some new, some new perspective, trying to get a, a boon in the gameplay out of that. Whether or not that will happen, it's it's we'll we'll see. But uh, yeah, I think that's the main thing they're going for, they're going for. I see. All right. Well, that concludes the uh, pre-submitted portion. Now we get to live Q and A, which will hopefully be about CLG or you or both. Uh, let's start with Shay from Gamezo. Hey, Finn. Um... Of course, it's not uh, it's not easy going on six in the past two weeks. Um, of course, you've just uh, finished this losing streak uh, against TSM now, which of course is a giant, you know, second place at the moment. How how much does does this win mean uh, to CLG and uh, you? Well, I'm very happy with the results. Uh, for me, what is important is just winning every game uh, and trying to become as good as we can. Uh, until playoffs because if we are a good team by playoffs we can make that run so the number one priority is winning games and the number two priority is becoming a better team yeah, that's a bit simplistic in nature but uh, winning against a team like TSM kind of shows that we can still compete with these better teams uh, and that our, our record is not as bad as, as it shows uh, I think we all think that if we play at our best we can win today I did not play my best far from it uh, I, I got solo killed and I was pretty behind at one point but my team really stepped it up today and they really allowed me to come back into the game. And I was able to repay that by performing well in fights and those side lanes. So I think it was a really nice balance between how we played this game. Uh, and I'm really happy that we were able to win, even though so I was not in a good position initially. Next question from Faisal from GameZo. Hi, Finn. Um... Last week, we saw the introduction of the new item, Hullbreaker. We haven't seen it being built yet in the LCS. Um, I was just wondering what your read on the item was, like how it fits into the meta, or if it even does in the first place. Hmm. It's a very interesting item, uh, certainly. I think what it lacks, like the, the main flaw of it, is that the stats it gives aren't anything spectacular. Uh, if in, in isolation, they're a bit better than other items, but I think the versatility that other items offer over it is way more important than just the raw speed pushing power, as I think the game right now is very team fight focused. Uh, if one team is pressuring a soul or a nasher, then you can't really ignore them and split push as maybe you could in the past. So the fact that you're sacrificing uh, team fighting stats just to have a stronger side lane is often irrelevant, as if you would buy another item, you'd probably still win the side. And the, the times where this item like tips the scale enough for you to start winning is, is far too rare for it to be actually consistently built, in my opinion. All right, Pedro, go ahead. Yes, hello, Finn. Congratulations on the win. Um, although Dr. Mundo has been um, increasing in importance for this meta, um, for you, you played him for the first time in around three years. Um, I'd like to know what was the key differences in your composition compared to TSM's that allowed you guys to then take the win? Mm. Well, I think we had a, a very clear plan how we wanted to execute our comp. We wanted to have a Mundo, which is very sturdy and self-sufficient in the top side. And it would have a strong bot lane and a strong mid jungle, which we could heavily invest into. Uh, and that was our initial plan. I did not 
before my job well this game i did get killed and i was very it's unacceptable really to get sort of killed in my opinion like this uh, so i'm very disappointed in myself but i think later on i was able to perform in fights as my team was able to convert their lead into me and get back into the game uh, while i think tsm's comp was very hard to execute for a team with their strength i, th I think tsm's comp is not hard in itself but i think the players are maybe not very comfortable in a draft like this. Uh, and I think they would maybe have a better chance against us if they drafted more like they usually does. I think they wanted to try something new and try to expand their their play style. Uh, or maybe I'm completely wrong and they thought this was actually their highest chance of winning. Uh, either way, I think we were able to perform our comp better than they could from theirs. And uh, that's why we were able to win, even though I had a very, very bad uh, death early on. Shay, go ahead. Hi again. Uh, what was really interesting to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the first item you built was also a new item, uh, Anthem as Chains. Now, in all honesty, it's a new item, and I really don't have any idea what it really does. Uh, could you explain uh, the reason behind uh, choosing this new item? Okay, so Anathema Chains is an item that gives only health and CDR, which are two pretty good stats of Mundo in itself. Uh, and it basically lets you choose one person in the enemy team who will do less damage to you, 30% less damage. So by buying this early, I can pretty much guarantee that my side lane will be stable. Even though if I'm not the strongest in side lane, I can guarantee that I'm not in any danger, for example, a Rumble or Lee Sin, whoever I'm matching. Uh, and the fact that it's so cheap, only costs 250 gold, uh, 2.5k, I mean, uh, makes it very accessible early. Uh, so by, by building it, like makes you makes it more easy to bridge into your second core, which was my mythic this game. Uh, and then later on, I would then put the chains on the ready carry, which made me incredibly tanky in fights, as their topside core are not very potent at killing tanks like Mundo, uh, and their only real hope of killing me was the ready carry, which I then denied for percent of this damage, which made me incredibly impressive. I think for the enemy team, made me incredibly tanky. Uh, so yeah, that's the reason behind it. Okay, uh, last question from Faisal. Hello again. Um, we have not seen a lot of tanks in the meta recently. We've seen a lot of carry top laners. Uh, you played Mundo today. What would need to be happened for tanks to bring them back into the meta, and would you even want that to happen? Mm, I wouldn't mind if tanks are a bit more playable. Mundo, I think the, NF, the chains are a step in the right direction for tanks makes them less punishable and uh, more accessible in a, in a wider variety of comps. Uh, I think why they have struggled in the past is because these bruisers are almost as tanky as they are uh, and do use way more damage and apply way more pressure in fights due to the fact that tank items are not very efficient while bruiser items are very like potent, like Core Drinker and Sterilex, for example, are like as a core, those two items make you incredibly tanky compared to, for example, an Iceborne and a, let's say, Frozen Heart or some other tank item. Uh, so for tanks to be a bit more accessible, I think especially MR items would need to be amped up a bit because I think they're falling a bit behind. But in general, I think they're going in the right direction now with the, these chains, which helps the tanks bridge easier into mid game. All right. Sorry, Shay. That's all the time we have today. No Finn, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it. Thank Everybody you. else will be back uh, after their FlyQuest and Cloud9 for more scrums. See you soon. <laughs>